going on everyone? It's Bales and welcome back to another AFL Fantasy Round Review. Round 5 is in the books. It was a good round, gather round, got to get to some games of football. Obviously went Thursday night to see my Crows get the win over the Blues. Friday night, Richmond-Sydney was a good game. It was good to actually watch a team that wasn't either Crows or Port. Um, I hadn't been to any other games where it was two teams apart from those. So getting to see Richmond-Sydney on Friday night and then on Sat- Sunday, sorry, not Saturday, um, seeing Geelong and West Coast and Collingwood St Kilda. So, yeah, really good round of football. And, yeah, Gather Round will be in Adelaide yet next year. So if anyone uh, wants to come to Gather Round, it's a, it's a good idea. It was a good good fun. So, yeah, had a lot of fun. Um, but, yeah, let's get into round five. So I scored a 21-20. So that's a pretty good round. I'm pretty happy with that. So I didn't have too many poor performers, which was nice. Uh, we'll get, obviously, to all the players in a second. But yeah, obviously team value is increasing, which is good. So I think I'm over 80. I think I'm 18.3 million uh, now, which is good. So uh, keeping that cash gen going. So that score of 2120 had me 10,205 for the week. So just outside the top 10K, which is not bad for a week. I thought I might have been a little bit higher, but a lot of people looks like I had a good week. So uh, that put me up to a ranking of 13,856. So I think that's up about 4,000. 125 spots if I'm correct I think that I did the math and I think it's about that so yeah very very happy um but yeah actually we can have a quick look actually so if you have a look at that so 17981 see so yeah, it's, it's it's somewhere in the vicinity anyway um but yeah very very good I'm glad that I moved up a little bit um actually no, hang on I'm going back so round three I realized that um yeah so um 13856 and yeah, so yeah, I think it was 4,125 spots. So really good to, to jump up. So hopefully this week we can hit that top 10K mark. I haven't been top 10K so far this year. I've had a couple of couple of issues in the team. Um, but yeah, so plus three, it's pretty obvious. Uh, that guy that's at D1 right there that I brought in this week for uh, Doherty. I was bringing him in regardless. I was actually going McGrath up to him. But with Doherty being out, it meant that I had to go him. Nick Dacos, he is an absolute superstar. I went to, obviously, this game, Collingwood St Kilda, and it's incredible watching him live. I said it on the podcast with uh, Tim, um, and we had uh, DC from Hat Chat and Mini Monk from Coach Panel. So if you haven't checked that out, make sure you go and check that on the video version on YouTube here, uh, or go and check the podcast wherever you get your podcast, and leave us a rating and review as well if you can, um, wherever you get them. So... But yeah, Nick Dacos, I was saying on there how how good he is to watch live. Like he was 40 metres away a couple of times and Nathan Murphy would say, take a mark. And he'd run away, no, sorry, run toward the ball and get the handball receive. It was just incredible. He just racked up, obviously, career high 42 possessions. And it was pretty good the week that I brought him in. He had his, uh, one of his, well, his best game of his career in terms of disposals. But I think his top score was 147 against the Crows at Adelaide Oval. So he's got a good record, Adelaide Oval. So yeah, he's... He's incredible. So he gets my plus three. But shout out as well to my boy, Rory Laird, VC on Thursday night, 118 points. I was very happy with that, considering he got tagged for three quarters as well to get that 118. That was the Laird that I saw last year, getting tagged and still pumping out a good score. So I'm pretty happy with him, and I think he'll be good moving forward. So he's a good trade target, but we'll get into him obviously a bit later. Negative three. I think I've got to give it to Finn Callahan. Um I held him with his 88 last week, and obviously with a couple of bullets, I wouldn't, I couldn't have traded him even if I wanted to. So he's been up and down. Had a good round one, but had a big finish to get that. Had a sort of a lower round two of only 61. Had a big score again uh, in the last quarter to get to that 61. Had a poor one. I think it was a 48. Then went back up to 88, which um, was great. And then he uh, dropped the 61. And thought against Hawthorne, he might have been able to pop a 70, but. Didn't quite get there, so uh, he'll be one of the guys I'm looking to move on this week. And then probably Stock is another one. 64 is not bad against Collingwood, but again, I wanted a 70, and, and he's felt fallen short of that, so not great. And then probably a few of the rookies, um, like Jojinbi, obviously got subbed out, so I'm not giving a negative three to him, just not obviously the best score. And then uh, K Chandler as well. The conditions didn't suit him, and Melbourne weren't very good, so yeah, 41, not great, but... Yeah, I'll talk about him when I get there. So let's go through the individual players anyway. So I've mentioned Nick Dacos, obviously brought him in this week, and 136 is fantastic. Season high. So it was good to get that sugar hit out of a player straight away. There's not too many times where I bring in a player and they go pop in the first week. So it was good to see Dacos put out a good score. 
Tom Stewart, 98. I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. Monk was saying on the podcast as well that West Coast are actually quite a tough matchup for general defenders because the ball isn't down there a lot. So 98, I was sort of... I would have wanted a ton because he was on 61. Um, okay. Um, just don't even know what that was. Some, I don't know. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, Tom Stewart. Yeah, he was just great. So very, very happy uh, with with him. As I said, 61. I probably wanted a little bit more from him at the half because he was on 61. But um, I'll start again. But yeah, 61 and a half. I was sort of hoping he cracked the ton, but 98 I'll take from a defender. So not too bad. Uh, better than 70. So Andrew McGrath, 84. I'm, I'm in two minds with this. So one, it's a good score because it's against Melbourne and it was wet and he still actually played a good game. And if it was probably dry conditions, I think he would have taken a few more marks and got more often than not, he would have probably cracked a ton in the game that like he played. So 84, I'll take. I'm going to probably hold him now. There's, I, I think I've moved past the... I had If I to get, was going to get rid of him, it would have been a couple of weeks ago. I think now I'm going to start trying to get these rookies off field. So I think McGrath's going to stay at my D6, probably to the buys. I, he's getting 80s. He's had one poor score of 65, but more, besides that, he's gone seventy between 79 and 88, I believe. I think that that's... I'm correct in saying that. Let's have a look at match stats. Yeah, so 81, 88, 79, 65, and 84. So, yeah. Funny enough, his two uh, worst scores have come against, uh, well, uh, St. Kilda's a very easy matchup, and then uh, Giants is it's not easy, but it's not, not too hard either. But only one. He's only taken three marks in the past two weeks, so hopefully he can take some more marks in future games. But, yeah, not too bad. I'll hold him for now, but, yeah, could be better. Um, Liam Stocker, as I mentioned, 64. He's another one that I'm looking to move off of this week. I want to try and move off of... McGrath is different. McGrath is a underpriced premium that's not performing, a little bit like Hayden Young, whereas a Liam Stocker and a Finn Callahan are mid prices that I want to get off. So, yeah, Stocker, Callahan, a few of these guys are guys that are in the mix to to move off, and, and their break evens as well. We're starting to move. So, like, Stocker's break even now is up to um, 64. So, yeah, and that's what he scored last week. So, I want to move off him. Ruben Jinby, 43. He was tracking for a decent score, but copped a. Poked to the eye in the first quarter, still was able to score well, and then copped a knock. I don't know what exactly it was, but was limping for a bit, tried playing it out. A couple minutes later, actually then came onto the bench. He looked fine by the time he got onto the bench, but then they subbed him out. From what we hear, it was just through management, and Adam Simpson said that he'll play. Um, he should play this week. So I'm not too fussed with him. And yeah, uh, I think that he's got a good role, so I'm happy to keep him for the time being and, and move off other rookies. So... Um, Darcy Wilmot, 57. I was pretty happy with that, considering I had to play him with the Will Day and Sam Doherty outs, and then obviously Cam McKenzie, so I had to play a rookie that I wasn't really happy to play, and yeah, Wilmot was one of them, and he put up a 57, and I was a bit nervous with the conditions, but it flankedly didn't rain uh, during the game. It actually came down after, straight after the game, but I'll take a 57. Obviously, Chester didn't play, and then Lockie Cowan as well, 39. Yeah, I looped him on Thursday night, home for a little bit more, but yeah, he, he he's... He's anything but he's not anything but he's consistent. That's 35, 40, 45, 42, 39. So he's gone between 35 and 42. So he's been consistent, but just not consistently good, unfortunately. Um, and Chin Cotter's been playing well in the VFL. Do they make that change this week? That's that could be an issue because uh, they did lose. So yeah, we'll be uh, giving that a close look this week. Rory Laird, 118, as I mentioned, took him as a VC. At the moment, I'm taking anything over 110 as a VC because we've seen so far this season captains and vice-captains have both sometimes on the same week failed. And, yeah, I think anything over 110 you've got to take. Because, again, if you've got two players, one goes 110, you take the VC, but then the other, other guy goes 130, you're only losing 20 points. You're actually not losing a lot, but that we've seen in the past that you can captain someone. Like those people that captained Cripps last year, got into the first quarter, on 36, and yeah, you're losing a lot of points. So I think over at 110, I'm taking. And yeah, Leg was very, very good. Got tagged for the last three quarters, as I mentioned, by Ed Kerno. But yeah, it was impressive to see him still put up that big performance. Obviously, a huge first quarter. I think with Dawson moving in the midfield now, I think he's going to get less attention because it's going to go to Dawson now because of how damaging he is. So I think Laird, we're going to start seeing some consistency moving forward. I think you're going to see a lot of a lot of tons coming, a lot of 110s, and, and hopefully some ceiling scores as well. So yeah, um, if he, you're looking at him as a target at 911k, he's not getting much cheaper than what he currently is. So he's currently priced at, so uh, break into 117. I think he's priced around that, yeah, that 10, 
seven range, uh, I think. So, yeah, he's right for the picking, and he's a good option, and, and you could get a big sugar hit this week against Hawthorne. Marcus Bonampelli, again, he was on track for a good score. Got tagged by Willem Drew, though, after quarter time. Had a bad, again, 91 points at three-quarter time. Only got the 100. So it's it's come, become a theme for the, for the first five games from Bonampelli. He manages to have one poor quarter and doesn't quite get to that 110, 120. He could easily be averaging 110 over the first five weeks, but unfortunately he's averaging, what, I think it's like 98 or 97 or something. Yeah, 98.6. So... He's got a, he has got a good run coming up of fixtures up to around 11 here. So you can see those fixtures on the screen there. So I think he's going to put up some good scores. I, th- I can see some 120s coming. So if you are an owner, I would be staying patient. And I think even as a non-owner, I don't hate the idea of potentially looking at him for a couple of weeks and then seeing him as a potential option in, in a couple of weeks. He puts up some big scores because if his floor is 90 then that's obviously fantastic. And then obviously we've seen he's got a ceiling. So hopefully we can see some big scores. Tom Green, very good as well. Got tagged by Connor Nash, I believe it was, in the second half, I think. Uh, still got 100, which is fantastic, but obviously is suspended for a week. Hopefully the Giants uh, appeal it. But it sounds, I think John Ralph tonight said that they um, are expected to appeal the decision. So I hope they do, and it would be fantastic if he gets off because... That means we'd have to play a less rookie. But for me, if he does get suspended or, and or they don't appeal or it gets upheld, I'll be holding for the week. I'd rather upgrade around him and play a rookie for a week and cop a hit and then next week have that other premium coming on. Because a lot, a few people are going to trade and then they're going to have a less premium next week, whereas I want to be be continually getting my team better and moving forward. So I'll be holding. Connor Rosie, very, very good, 108. He had a good second half. So I think it was on 40 points at the half and ended with a 68-point second half. So he was very, very good. Um, and, yeah, just keeps getting the job done. Again, he's got a nice run of fixtures coming. He's got West Coast this week. Um, St Kilda, Essendon, North Melbourne, Melbourne, Richmond, Hawthorne. So very, very nice run coming up. So, yeah, if you don't have uh, Connor Rosie, I think he's actually a pretty good option to bring in as well. So, um, yeah, he's not getting any cheaper. Break him 92, 791. So, yeah, I'd, I'd jump on if you don't have him. He's a good option. Lockie Whitfield, I jumped on him this week. 86, I want a little bit more. 46 points in the second half. He had a better second half, a good last quarter. Um, I think he'll be solid for me. A bit like McGrath, I think he'll get his 80-plus scores. And he is an underpriced premium, so that's why I did jump on. And he has got that ceiling. So that's it, maybe the ceiling's not as high as what it once was because Ash and uh, coming are back there. But I think Whitfield will, will put up some good scores. So... I'm happy to have him in the team, and he'll be my D5 moving forward anyway. So he's fine there. Finn Callahan, as I mentioned, uh, just been a bit up and down that wing row, as we know, is volatile. So I'm looking to move him on this week. Will Ashcroft, very impressive performance as well. Had a big second or third. I think it was the third quarter. He had a good uh, quarter there. So, yeah, very impressed with him, and he's just going to continue to make cash. And 534K, yeah, he's performing fantastic. He's performing better than what a rookie normally uh, does and if it wasn't for Sheezel, we'd be talking probably more about Ashcroft, but because because Sheezel just keep, keeps delivering, um, yeah, it's fantastic. Matthias Filippo, I was very uh, pleasantly surprised with his performance. So against Collingwood, watch obviously this in person and wasn't playing deep forward. He was actually getting up the ground. He had a couple of CBAs as well, but it was impressive him going up the ground. And with Tim Membry expected to return this week, he was emergency last week. I'm surprised he didn't play, but. He'll be back this week. Obviously, Kamenei will be out, but Membry will come back. Max King is not too far away. Jack Hayes isn't far away. So they're going to get some of these taller forwards back, which I would then anticipate they're going to try and push Philippou a little bit more into the midfield and maybe have a bit of a, a more of a potentially 50-50 split, but just just um, at worst, just like more midfield time, which will be good. And I think his scoring will get better. He's up to nearly 400K now, which is good. I'm glad I didn't get rid of him. I know, I've known a few coaches did, and it's not the end of the world, um, but he has got a break even now of 19. So if he can get a couple more sixty back-to-back 60s, then he's going to start making some really good money, which is good. Ollie Holland's on the bench. Again, I looked uh, the three of Cowan, Hollands, and Pedler, and 49. I could have taken a few people did. I just want, I just thought I would rather play Philippo and try and get a little bit more in terms of points. And I'm glad I did because I got the extra 21 points. But I'm definitely not begrudging anyone that would have taken it because a 50 score from a rookie essentially is not bad. So, yep. And I do like his uh, upcoming couple of fixtures. So uh, West Coast to Optus in round seven. But this week against St Kilda at Marvel should be a good score. And I think he could put up a 70 in this game. So, again, his break-even's now up at 
39. So there might not be much cash to make unless he can pop a good score this week. So it'll be a big watch for this week. If he doesn't perform well enough like a 70, then he could be an option to move on next week. Obviously, Alan Davy didn't um, play. He should come back and he was just managed. So I would expect him to come back and not be a red dot. Ryan Marshall was fantastic, especially after... He had a quiet first quarter. I think he was on 19 points. And from then on, he just went bang. So what... What's that? 115 points in the last three quarters. So, yeah, he was fantastic. And I did have him captain. Um, but then, obviously, Rory Led got a 118, so I was going to take it. So it only cost me 16 points. I never would have taken on a 118 anyway. So I'm just glad that Marshall um, went well and I had him. Big Shawnee Darcy on the bench, uh, 118. Again, uh, Ned Moore was a good matchup for him with no wits. Uh, and, yeah, he just, he's just he been very, very good. Uh, averaging, I think, just a tick over 100, I believe, now. Um, yeah, 100. So... Yeah, very happy. Tim English this week. It'll be a good test for Tim English and for Sean Darcy. But I think Sean Darcy, good matchup for him in terms of uh, he'll get a lot of hit outs here, I think. And yeah, he's just been good. So it only cost me five points by not having English. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll get English at some point um, for Sean Darcy. But at the moment, it's definitely not a priority at all because Sean Darcy's putting up some good scores. So I'm very, very happy with him. Tim Taranto, 109, continues his ton run. Light Dacos, they're the two in my current team that have gone 100 in every game. Obviously, Taranto started with, whereas Dacos I only got on last week. But he just gets the job done. Like Again, he didn't have a huge start in the first quarter, but just got rolling in the second, third, and fourth quarter and got to a 109. So just doing what he needs to. Sydney's not an easy matchup. So, yeah, 930K now. I think he's going to be the F1 from, from what we've seen over the first five weeks. Uh, so... Yeah, very, very good starting pick. And if you don't have him, I still think you can, you've can. you got to bring him in because he's going to be a top two forward and he just gets it done every week. So, yeah, very happy with him. And Melbourne this week is a good matchup, as we know, for midfielders. So could put up a good score here. Uh, Josh Dunkley, 102. Just good to see him get a, a ton. Obviously, second one for the year. Has put up a couple of lowish scores. But obviously, we're not happy with what he's been doing because he's only averaging 94.6. But... He'll still be a top six forward, even if he's not going to hit that 110, 115 ceiling. Maybe we thought he would, but yeah, I think he will have good big games um, as he gets used more used to the uh, Brisbane system. He will pop some 120 scores, so when that happens, obviously we'll be very happy when that does, but yeah, I wouldn't be trading um, at this point. If you moved off him after, say, round one or two, that probably wasn't a bad move. You probably made a bit of cash. You might have got in a a Jack Zebo or someone like that who's making cash and putting up good scores and, and you can look at Dunkley in the future but for everyone that's held I th- we, we just hold now and, and I think you'll be okay from here Errol Goulden 96 started off really well 40 points at, uh, in the first quarter and I was I was loving it he was uh, performing fantastic and then unfortunately uh, didn't quite go on with it still 96 I'll still take it it was still a pretty solid score and if someone said if we had Goulden to start of the year and he was going to average like he's had that one poor score, averaging 93. Take away that, what, that 71 that he got against Melbourne. He's averaging about that 97 mark. So you'd be very, very happy with that if that was the case. So I'm very happy with Gordon um, to this point. Jack Zebel, 87 again. Not quite the game um, for him normally to score well, but I was very happy with his, um, well, happy enough with his performance of 87. He'll have better games um, moving forward as well. I'm just thinking, who they got this week? I think they got Gold Coast. Uh, at Metricon. Yeah, Gold Coast at Metricon. So that's going to be a really good matchup for him, I think. And I think he'll score really well. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving having Z win my side. And I will be flicking him to defence, which is good. And another guy I'll be flicking to defence is Harry Sheasel. So it was just unfortunate that his ton run did come to an end. The marks, unfortunately, weren't there. But he still had over 30 touches again. Uh, 96 points. He did cop a corky, though. Um, just a bit of a watch. But from what Clark on that and the words coming out of North Melbourne is he will be fine and, and he should and he'll be playing this week, which will be good. So, but yeah, he can't believe he's 748k and he's still got a break in a 48. He's still got money to make. And at this point, we're really not fussed with him um, making money because he's just he's going to be a guy we're going to be keeping pretty much all season. At worst, he's a luxury trade later on in the year. So, Yep, he's been fantastic. Kay Chandler, as I mentioned, not a great score of 41, but it didn't cost me too much because the rookies on my bench, the only better score I would have got would have been from a, a Holland to 49. So I only lost eight points, so it's fine. A lot of people had Chandler on their field. So he's a guy that you can we can look to upgrade um, soon as well because his cash gen is starting to slow a little bit. He's 460K. He's got a break even. I think it's in the 50s now. I believe it's like 53, 53. So... He's got good matchups to come though, um, especially the ones the three after Richmond. So Richmond's still good, 
but North Melbourne, Gold Coast, Hawthorne. So I'm not opposed to keeping him for that, um, unless obviously he gets dropped or something like that. But uh, yeah, he is a guy that we could move on and you can move on even as early as this week. So uh, Luke Pedler, um, 47. Again, he has 35 points in the first quarter. Three, uh, zero points in the second quarter, negative three in the third quarter. So he'd gone down three points in two quarters and he had a good sort of decent last quarter to get to 47. So what do you have? 15 points, but could have been bigger. Could have been a 70 plus score if he'd done well in those two quarters, but he'll be good. I think he's still a fieldable rookie. And I think what I'm doing is I will be fielding a guy like him on my field this week. So um, yeah, Van Ruin quiet with a 29. We'd gone coming back potentially this week. They don't need him this week, I don't think, because it's against Richmond with no ruck. So, yeah, I, he might come back. But if he does, it could be a bit of a question mark. Obviously, who does Tom McDonald keep his spot? Does Ben Brown come back in? Does Max Gorn come back in this week? it would be interesting to see. But Van Ruin is a bit of a watch because he might not hold his place. But at least he made at least he's made a, over 100K. So you can still downgrade him if you want and get a little bit of cash there. So... Um, and then Cam McKenzie as well came on as a sub only scored 20, but that mid forward test is going to be really important, I think, moving forward. And he's got a break even now 63, which is a little bit, uh, sorry, 62, which is obviously a little bit annoying, um, him being a sub and having a higher break even. But I think he can still uh, outscore that and make a little bit more cash. But at worst, I think he's still got a spot in that team. And yeah, I'd be um, more inclined to move other rookies on. So yeah, so that's how the team went. So. In terms of my moves this week, what I'm looking at doing, uh, I think for me, they're pretty much locked in unless I cop any carnage. So the Tom Green thing doesn't influence me. Um, I'm looking at going Finn Callahan down to Seamus Mitchell, uh, and that will obviously bring Luke Pedler onto the field for me. And then I'll be going Liam Stocker up. And because I've got Rosie in my mids, I'll be swapping Stocker with uh, Sheasel and Zeeble. They'll both go into my defense. I'll put Rosie back into my forward line. And I'll be bringing in a midfield, and that midfield will be Toot Miller. I just like his buy. The round 13 buy is going to be very important. I think we've got to jump on a couple of the players that got round 13, because obviously Geelong and Gold Coast are the only two teams on that buy, and it will be really good during the buys to have a few players playing the other main buy rounds, um, because I think still round 13, two teams are on buy, but it's still best 18. So we're going to have, obviously, we're going to have probably 26, 27 players in those weeks because a lot of people aren't going to have a lot of Geelong Gold Coast players. But the more you have in that week, the better it will be served for you in the other threes. But don't force bringing Gold Coast Geelong players. Only bring in the ones that are, are genuine options like your Took Millers, Tom Stewart's, maybe even a Mitch Duncan if you want to bring him in or a, uh, Noah Anderson. Guys like that that could be, could be of use. So, yeah. That's what I'm looking at doing, and yeah, I'm going to be happy to bring in Toot Miller because I haven't owned him for many games. I think I owned him at the back end of last... Uh, I don't even know if I got him last year, actually. I think I had the back, the back end for last three or four games of 2021 when he did average over 120. So I'm looking forward to owning him, uh, and hopefully for the rest of the season, uh, barring obviously any injury or anything like that. So looking forward to that. So they're my moves. That's what I'm doing. Let me know in the comments below, though, what you guys are looking at doing with your trades, or if you've got any other trade questions or anything like that. Leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer those when I get a chance. But appreciate you guys tuning in to watch another round review. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I think we're 122 away now. So I keep mentioning every we're counting down slowly to a thousand. So if you haven't subscribed, bottom right hand corner, we very much appreciate if you can help me reach that thousand subscriber goal. I always appreciate everyone's support as always on the channel. Uh, turn notifications on so you miss when I go live or upload any other content. Obviously, we'll be back later on this evening for another AFL Fantasy Daily News recap. Make sure you go and follow AFL Fantasy Fanatics on Twitter and then go get the podcast wherever you get your podcasts or watch it on YouTube here, whatever uh, tickles your fancy. So, um, yeah, um, again, DC and Monk, uh, was great chat, chatting to them post around and, and yeah, ha having good fun with Tim Guest uh, on all those pods. So really enjoying that. Um, all my social media links are in the description below, so go and follow all of those as well. So good luck um, for, well, have a good, not good luck, have a good week, guys. And, uh, yeah, I'll speak to you guys uh, in the next video. So I'm out. Cheers.